This is it. It does not get better than this. This is my favorite hike ever. What an amazing day. It's just after 4 a.m. Just parked. See a lot of lights on the trail already. So it's exciting. <laughs> I'm freezing. It is like 45 degrees. So just gotta get moving. This is, this is the best. This trail is so good. This is my absolute favorite trail. This is Cactus to Clouds. It starts downtown Palm Springs and goes straight up 10 and a half thousand feet. The first eight and a half thousand feet in eight and a half miles. And then the last two and a half thousand feet or so in six miles. This trail is relentless. It's just straight up the whole way, but it's absolutely an amazing journey. This was probably my third real hike ever. I think I did Mount Baldy, then I did Mount Whitney, and then me and a buddy came out and did Cactus the Clouds. That was almost 15 years ago, and I've probably done it 100, 150 times since then. I think the first time it took us, it took us like 15 and a half hours to go all the way up. And then the best part, if you like uphill, you can take a tram down. One of the challenges of this trail is the weather and the temperature change because the, the trail starts down, down in the desert, pretty much at sea level, and below could be 95 degrees at two in the morning. And then you could get up to the top and it's snowing. So this is mid-November here. We had a nice crisp morning, lows of 50, maybe high 40s. It, it is a little chilly, but as long as I'm moving, I'm good. And I've got a bunch of layers in my bag, so I'm expecting it to be... It could be anywhere between 30 and 50 up at the top. There are a lot of people on the trail today because of how nice the weather is. Usually in the summer you'll see fewer folks. Because it's just too hot. Right now is a great time because the weather's cool and there's no snow yet, so it should be a fantastic day. So this is the last relatively easy or not so difficult section before the last mile and a half that just goes up 2,000 feet. So I always try to eat a little bit here. One of my favorite parts of this trail, besides watching the city just disappear behind you, is seeing how all the plants and fauna changes as you go up the mountain. In the bottom, it's, it's all dirt, rocks, some cacti. You get a little higher up to 4,000 feet. Shrubbery, about 7,000 feet now, and we're getting up into the trees. Made it to the, the traverse. Short little section here that traverses along before the final push to Round Valley, Long Valley. So this section right here can get pretty bad in the winter. It can get iced over and it makes for a very difficult and dangerous passage. I've had to turn around a couple times here before because I couldn't get through. I also use this opportunity to make sure I'm eating enough 
I'm drinking enough because that last push to the valley is quite challenging. rock behind me is Kaufman Crag. Once you hit this little section right here, you're gonna just head up that path and just go straight up. And really, what I like to remember is you're really only going to about the same height as that rock. So as painful as this next section is gonna feel, you can always look to your right to see how much farther you've got to go. And this last steep section right here, this is called Grub's Notch. Grub's Notch is another one of these sections that can be really treacherous in the winter with the ice. Because it gets really steep and the ice can be really slippery. Thankfully today, absolutely perfect, perfect temperature. Getting near the top of Coffin Crag. There it is. And you can see a little blue through the trees. That means the top is right there. All right, made it up skyline and uh, just under four hours, 20 minutes. Absolutely excellent for me. Much faster than I expected. Uh, got about six miles to go, 2,500 feet in Round Valley here up to the top of Mount San Jacinto. We'll stop by the ranger station back there, uh, fill up on some water, get a permit, and then head to the top. So an easier way to get up to Round Valley and Long Valley is to take a tram up. It'll go straight from the desert floor up to eight and a half thousand feet. This is the perfect place to come in the summer. Very popular for rock climbers. Behind me is kind of one of the first warm up boulders that we've got and you'll often see a lot of climbers carrying their crash pads. Oh, here comes some right now. Coming up. Used to come up here all the time to climb. And so we carry these big they look like mattresses, but they're, they're really just these pads for us to land on that we can wear as a backpack just so we can carry them. Everybody looks at you and says, what are you doing with that big thing? How far are you hiking? And we, every time we make up a different joke to tell them. San Jacinto Peak, six miles. I swear the trail gets longer and longer every year. It used to be like five and a half miles and now it's six. I just realized I forgot my poles at the ranger station, so I gotta go back and get them. What a bummer. All right, let's try this again. Well, the nice thing is it's relatively flat now. It's not very steep. There's a couple steeper sections later, but as much as I want to run this, now I'm at eight and a half thousand feet and I'm fighting the altitude. I am not acclimatized to this altitude. So even just walking, I'm out of breath. All right, towards the end of Long Valley, you enter the Round Valley Trail and uh, this is where the permits are required. So I picked my permit up at the ranger station and I'm good to go. From here it's about 1.7, 1.8 miles to the next intersection and there are two outhouses or porta potties. So that's pretty nice. Although in the winter the snow piles up so high 
you can't get inside. That was quite a bit of ice back there. That just goes to show even though today it's got a high of 50, still has a low of below freezing. One and a half miles to Roman Divide. We got about half a mile to Round Valley in the campground. Porta Potty should be just ahead. Thankfully, trail is still nice and easy, so a lot of time to recover after that steep incline from the skyline. Now, if you'll excuse me for a moment, I have to use the loo. All right, another half mile, nice and easy. This section of the trail was refurbished probably 2019 or so. Really nice, they cut in these Nice steps here, make it really easy. You can kind of see remnants of the old trail down there. There's one of the old signs too. But this is quite nice. They did a really nice job putting this together. It took them almost all summer. And I'm out of breath again. I think this is another ranger station right right behind me. Honestly, not too sure. But the campground, Grand Valley Campground is also back there. For as many times as I've been up here, I have never been to the campground. But there's running water here usually and a little pump. Just bring a filter, it's really gross. If you're still feeling good, this is usually the part of the trail, the one mile up to Wellman's Divide, that breaks my spirits. I have gone halfway up this and it's been a struggle today. Feeling great though, so let's keep going. What did I say about breaking spirits? I'm not even at 12 miles, it's like 11 and a half, 9,500 feet of gain, and all the fatigue, all the fatigue is hitting me. I just took some caffeine, so hoping that'll help, but this right here is definitely the longest mile stretch. All right, when you see blue sky poking through the trees, you know you've almost made it to the top of this section and to Wellman's Divide. And so, there is Blue poking through the trees. All right, this is the last major intersection. This is called Wellman's Divide. Beautiful view here of the valley. I mean, it's absolutely spectacular. So, it's about 1.7 miles to the peak, heading up. If you're looking for a particularly adventurous day, you can actually head down and make an eight and a half mile loop around through Idlewild, Suicide Rock. I mean, absolutely spectacular day. Uh, one of the, the older local legends once told me it's called the Strawberry Loop, so not today for me, maybe uh, Maybe next spring, if you're interested in checking that out, make sure to like and subscribe, you know how it goes. So today, it's just gonna be 1.7 miles up to the top. We're at just under 12 miles, 9,700 feet of elevation. I know I'm not the first one to say this, but there's something about this view that just gives you a second wind. It is, Incredible. 
I mean, the city is just this little blip in the distance. You can see Joshua Tree. Is that the Salton Sea in the distance? I mean, what a day. So we continue on this switchback for about a mile. It's pretty easy, pretty gradual. It just goes on and on and on. Switchback continues just a little more up to the notch ahead. Then it cuts back. And then one more push to the summit. stellar view you can see everything you can see Mount Baldy you can see San Gorgonio we got Joshua Tree over there ah oh, there's Pop Springs where we started in the Salton Sea let's keep going what else do we see we jump over these rocks oh my gosh there's Santiago Majesca Catalina Island in the distance. I mean, I can literally see Catalina Island. That is sick. Sick. The hard part is over. Now it's all downhill, except for the very final section. Got a chat with a nice guy at the top named Roger who is training for Denali. He crushed this thing with 40 pounds on his back. That's sick. I honestly didn't think I would get another chance this season. I really shouldn't even be out here today. Next week, I'm supposed to start tapering for my trip to New Zealand. Some really exciting trails gonna come out of that, so make sure you watch for those. But, I mean, Cactus to Clouds, not really the best training for any of that, because it's just straight up, and not really a lot of run distance, which is what I should be practicing. This trail is just incredible. Today was perfect. Nice, crisp, cool temperature all day. I, I didn't wear my jackets at all. I put my gloves on for five minutes total. Didn't need too much water. It's been absolutely, absolutely lovely. And I'm so glad I was able to get out today. I finally feel like I can breathe again. Oh, 1.8 miles to go. Should be easy and nice and easy downhill. I've always thought this rock looked a bit like a tsunami, and I was always hoping something like a really strong. And that tsunami wall means we're almost down to 
Long Valley floor, so getting close. You know what this means? Oh my god, it's freezing. Oh my god, I can't feel my hand. It's freezing. Oh Jesus, it's freezing. Oh, my hand is numb. My hand is numb. All right, back to Long Valley. Not too much farther now. Get to the ranger station, drop off the permit. All right, final push up the cement walkway to the tram station. This is often the most brutal way to finish your day, but it means they're almost done. So I'm down from the tram. I was at, at the tram station, uh, which is like a couple miles away from, from where I parked. So usually you call for an Uber. Couldn't get an Uber today. So I am running down the hill, that big hill, and maybe I'll be able to get an Uber at the bottom or just run all the way back to the car. Thankfully, it's like a nice mid 70s in Palm Springs, but usually it can be like 100, 120, so. shoes two days ago and I didn't clean them. So there's still vomit all over my shoes. 